Hi guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening from everywhere you're watching from. It's a beautiful year and it's a year of progress. It's a year of speedy attainment of determinations for every one of us this new year in Jesus' name. And so now, first official video goes out to the medical laboratory scientists around the world who have been looking towards migrating to Australia and have been wondering how they can do it. How will the medical laboratory scientist get to Australia? If you are looking towards doing that, through scale migration pathways or you want to, be to get an employer nomination, you can just follow this simple process, two little steps at a time, then you will be very, very fine with everything. Now, it's either you assess as a medical laboratory scientist or you choose to assess as a medical laboratory technician. Two pathways, very big differences. And I will tell you of the easiest pathway to take. And please don't say, oh, this is me. I have PhD in medical laboratory science and so I cannot do the patient pathway. If you want to assess, the assessing authority, the body that will be assessing you is called AIMS. That is Australian Institute of Medical and Clinical Scientists. And easier, quicker, safer. It's not cheaper to assess as a medical laboratory technician as against assessing as medical laboratory scientists. And your answer code for that job, for that rule, will be 311213 as technician. Why would you want to do that? Your step will just be two stages, easier, and you will not be taking those big examinations where we now go and be studying anatomy, physiology, pathology, and so many other courses. What you want to see is genomics, many things that you need to study, and you must pass at 50%, and probably the place you see you will be fit to take those tests are not even very close. You spend so much transporting yourselves to where you may need to take those examinations. Please, please, if you want to hit my cancer, take this laboratory technician pathway, medical laboratory technician pathway. And why will you be able? Of course, you may be the chief in your home country. It is assumed that at this stage, you will be able to perform what a medical laboratory technician is performing and excellently to a medical laboratory uh, technicians do. They perform, they assist with medical laboratory tests on blood, on body fluids, on tissues, in patho pathology laboratories, and they operate the equipment in use for those things. They do this under the supervision of a medical laboratory scientist. So if you are a supervisor as a medical laboratory scientist, and you are as assessing as a medical laboratory technician, it means that you do those things that the one under you who is a scientist can do. You can do them as perfectly and much more perfectly than them. So what you will need are documents. I will soon open a page for you to look at the documents that you need. You all actually know that you will need your international passport. You will need that. You will need your certificates. You need your transcripts to show all those things you said you've done. You will need to bring in your years of experience. If you take this pathway, it's easier. It saves you time, saves you energy. You will not waste so much uh, money to, to get things done. So, your criteria for assessment will be your education and your practice. It will be your qualifications and your experiences. The assessment takes about six months and I've learned that some people are getting their reports back in eight months. So it's not something you want to do and you just dump into it and do it two days and you want to do pop pa No, they are not doing sharp sharp like that. They are not doing priority processing. No, don't prepare yourself to go and pay for priority. Prepare ahead, start right away if it is something you want to do. So, and they will not give you information about the progress. So your reports will be ready at a particular point in time. You should be looking forward to that time that the report will be out. And how much are you paid to have this assessment done? 900 Australian dollars. Convert it to your own country's currency. So you pay your assessment reports will be out at the end of six months. 
maybe if they are plenty things are easier on them maybe it might come out much more quicker than six months but then target that point so if you are thinking of being in australia possibly by the end of this year then the race starts right now and you actually need english test to process this either ietcs either person test of english i will show you the time score that you need but if your decision is fine congratulations then you progress to creating me account and doing all those things but if your results come out negative you are not convenient with what they've assessed you for then you want to appeal that report so you pay for appeal and they will sit again and have a decision oh what should we do should we upgrade should we retain what we've done for this person under this justification because you have to write to them to do that and you bring forth your strong reasons for thinking that your reports were not okay so other otherwise you are very good with everything they've done is positive you are fine then you just crack on to the next stage now if you are appealing you go to the website where you do that and you put in your appeal and you make your payment all fees paid whether for initial assessment or not are non-refundable fees so make a good plan as you go into this now let's have a look at how they get their things done the documents you need everything you need to pull together the way you must scan them in those days you have to send those many of those documents by post but these days you can actually upload your document which saves money and i think they are doing very well with regards to that so let's have a quick look at what their website tells us and please if you have questions don't hesitate to quiz me Okay, ask me questions so I can tell you, oh, do it this way, don't do it this way. Okay, my fans, my family members, let's see how to go about this quickly. And um, we have them here, the medical laboratory technician, which is what we cancelled. And that is, so this is who we are talking about. And this is your Anscook code three one one two one three and these are the things you must take note of please and please and please make sure you read through these documents carefully before you put in your application please these guys don't refund fees very important so you read through the guidelines the one for you as a medical laboratory scientist will be this one. This is the one you must read around. Interestingly, it's in PDF format. And um, you should print this form. You see the form you are going to print for yourself as a, um, as a medical laboratory scientist technician medical laboratory technician you're going to print this particular form the application form here this is the one you will print and um, you will complete your application and a list of relevant application fees you can find here once you are done with that make your assessment payments you will now email your completed application form and scans of required document. You will soon see the required documents. You are going to email them here. Okay? And ensure you read through all these steps. If you have completed overseas tertiary qualification, ensure your tertiary education institution has sent a copy of your official academic transcript to AIMS in the sealed envelope. If your institution has given the, you the sealed envelope, then you must post it, post it or courier it to him. They will automatically send you a confirmation mail when your application form and supporting documents have arrived. Documents email arrives at applications, I mean at these applications at aims.org at AU. They will check your application form and supporting documents and send you an email if anything is missing you can rectify any missing information or supporting documents you have opportunity to do that 
They will then verify your credentials and will contact you if they are unable to verify your identity. So your identity goes into it. Your English proficiency goes into this. Your employment, your education, registration and licensing. So I believe you guys have licensing authorities like we have. Everything puts them in. Then they will process your application fee if you've chosen to provide your credit or debit credit uh, card, whichever one, uh, or your application form, if that's what you've done. But I would just suggest just pay online once and close your eyes and pay online. You will now receive an email that contains this AIMS assessment card. Your application form and supporting document will be sent to the AIMS assessment committee for processing and this you keep praying as it, everything goes to them. Then the com committee will now sit and complete your assessment and then results will be sent to the ratification committee. This committee have senior AIMS representatives. They are trying to safeguard their society. They want to be sure that anyone coming would be able to do what they claim they can do. So your skills assessment results will be written, it will be reviewed and then signed by the Chief Executive Officer there. You should be assessed as eligible for the AIMS Medical Laboratory Scientist Professional Examination. You will also receive a professional examination invitation. That is if you want to go as laboratory scientist. That's the part I said I want you guys to try to avoid. EBS does not run a professional examination for the occupation of medical laboratory scientists. This is why we are advising you to choose this part. This is the part that we con that will concern you. They will email your assessment results to you. And then uh, that will be sent to you throughout uh, through any email address you've provided, or if you are using agency, they will send it through your agency. There are documents that you must provide. The process involves getting a reference letter from all the places you are claiming points as a place of employment, and uh, the reference letter. We state your job role, starting time and the ending time, and uh, how many hours you do in a week, whether it's a full time or part time. Then it will be stamped and it will have the contacts of the establishment or the somebody signing it, either the issuer or the head of the department. And it will be on letterheaded paper. Then, after getting the letters already, it must be notarized. So, then you get your license. Almost all the documents you, your traveling documents, your desk passport, your license, your first letter. Get all. Notarized, and then you pay the assessment fee. Then, as of the time we did the, 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 the you sent to them through post. But recently, they have um, before uh, after COVID, they modified it that you don't need to email um send through post again. You can email to their website. Then, <clears throat> uh, still everything still the same. Well, you need English test. So, overall, what they access is the, what they accept is overall, but not the individual. Then after that, you email the, you send to them. Then they pay the fee. And that's it.